Hey guys, welcome to Interesting Weird Wild Rift. So Zero back with a Ash updated complete guide. Um, and of course, as usual with our updated complete guides, don't forget to refer to the Ash basic guide that I'll put up in the cards above for her skills that bring order tips and tricks as well as some combos. But let's say let's don't jump into the actual items. So for Ash, I do believe the best build currently is going to be the on hit build uh, for Ash. The on hit items are really strong, and of course, Ash is also a pretty all right. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's strong, but I think she's pretty uh, middle of the pack in terms of ADCs. Um, and here is her build. So first up, we're going to start off with Gluttonous Greaves. Now the reason why we're starting off with Gluttonous Greaves is because we already have uh, so much attack speed from our items. Every item basically gives attack speed. We don't really need more attack speed than that. So we're going to go for uh, AD and Omni Vamp instead. So first item, of course, the Ruined Bork. Um, attack speed, of course, a little bit of AD, physical vamp. Of course, the current health on hit damage on the rune strikes, as well as the drain passive, really good for a burst, as well as to slow people down. And then we also have, of course, the penalty uh, on health. So second item, we actually go for Terminus. So the reason why we're going for Terminus second, even though it is um, normally a later game item, is simply because we get the AD. Like this build has like no AD, pretty much not no AD, but really low AD. So. Terminus giving us the 40 AD is obviously really good. 30 attack speed, really, really decent. Um, and of course, we get the 35 bonus on hit magic damage, which is really, uh, of course, really good. And then, of course, as usual, we have the bonus resist resistances and penetrations as we stack up the Terminus. And then after we go for a Wits End, which of course another very strong unhit item gives you, of course, the attack speed, the magic resist, uh, as well as, of course, the unhit magic damage and um, the health when you are below half HP. Now you can actually not go for this and go for other items instead if the enemy team has like completely um, no magic damage which is basically almost never going to happen. Uh, but yeah, oh by the way apologies for uh, re uh, me receiving a message just now, I forgot to silence my phone there. But yeah, so next item generally is going to be Runan's Hurricane because Runan's of course not only gives you the attack speed and the on hit but allows you to attack 3 people at one time and by this point in the game. Uh, of course, attacking three people at one time with like basically four on-hit items is going to be insane levels of damage on Ash. Uh, and lastly, we go for a defensive item, which could be something like a GA. Now, as I said, you could swap out the last the last couple of items you technically can swap. So you can swap Wits and you can swap Runans and you can swap GA if you want to. And kind of some other item options you have is Bloodthirster, which is going to give you a lot of AD and physical vamp as well as just generally good stats. You could also go for something like Triforce, which also gives you very good stats, especially the health um, and the ability haste is really, really handy. And of course, the Spellblade passive is really where it is at, uh, you know, for this particular build. Of course we have uh, Nash's Tooth as well as another on-hit item option but I think that generally the other on-hit items are just superior so there's no real reason to go uh, for Nash's Tooth in this scenario. Of course other defensive items could also include something like a Sterex or even a Maw if there's a lot of magic resist on the enemy team. Uh, for the runes of course Lethal Tempo because we of course care about attack speed because we are building on hits. Uh, we have Brutal, of course, yeah, again, we attack a lot, so easy to prop Brutal non-stop. Giant Slayer is generally going to be the best here for um, the value against health. And uh, of course here, we're actually going to go for Bloodline uh, because we don't need more attack speed than what we already have here. We have so much attack speed in the build, we don't need Legend Lacrity, so I'm going to go for Legend Bloodline instead. And here we can go for either Bone Playing or Hex Flash, depending on what you prefer. And for the spells, generally go for Flash together with Ghost or Exhaust if you really need it. But Ghost is really, really good for Ash because having bonus movement speed while slowing people down with your passive is completely busted. So I do like going for Ghost majority of the time. But with all that said, let's move on to talking about our gameplay. Okay, so on to the gameplay. Of course, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Any questions, queries, or remarks, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And of course, be sure to address them. So in this particular match, we're playing Ash Seraphine. Now, Ash, not very support-dependent champion. You don't really care about whether you're with an engager or an enchanter. Both, both kind of works out. Like with, with an engager, you have a lot of chain CC with your ulti together with their engage. So you can probably get a lot of kills in lane and in the later parts of the game to catch people out as well. So she does work really well with engagers, but she also works well with enchanters. Like if uh, you know enchanters buff her up and all that, she's not the most highest damage ADC, but uh, you know she will of course do a lot more damage with, with someone buffing her up than someone who doesn't. Um, and here we're against a Kalista Soraka. So this is a very kind of uh, aggressive uh, lane kind of combo. Even though Soraka is not really an engager and doesn't really want to be tossed in by Kalista. Soraka Kalista is a very strong lane simply due to the fact that if Kalista goes all in, Soraka can heal her constantly and the health that she has is actually a lot more than what you can see because the kills are going to come in constantly. 
and uh, that is going to make uh, the combo really really strong uh, simply said <laughs> so uh, it is something really dangerous however the big advantage that Ash has is range so Ash is the second longest range in um, a base range in the game or second only to Caitlyn and uh, Ash is actually a really good matchup into Caitlyn because Caitlyn doesn't really bully you very well because of your high range as well and of course if you're against anyone who's not a Caitlyn um, you are going to be able to, to bully them or at least outrange them right so here you can see it's really difficult for Callista to do anything to me just because I have the extra range so I can get in like a sneak in one auto attack here one auto attack there uh, one W here one W there and of course my poke is not going to mean very much because Soraka can just heal her back up um, but still uh, doesn't mean I shouldn't do anything because if not it's just going to be you know both of us attacking the minions and doing nothing you can see Seraphine's landing some pretty good poke as well um, so even though we are landing poke and Soraka is healing it up Soraka is consuming a lot of mana to heal the Kalista, which is of course a very good thing for us and another thing I haven't really pointed out yet is one of the reasons why Seraphine Ash is a very very strong lane is um, simply due to the fact that Seraphine of course um, has to double cast her E to root but if there's an Ash on the team that can apply the slow um, Seraphine only has to single cast her E to actually get the root um, on doesn't like, she, she doesn't actually have to double cast it so that's one of the biggest strengths of the Seraphine uh, Ash lane uh, which most people are not necessarily aware of all the time so that is one of the major advantages however of course your Seraphine needs to be aware of that and this Seraphine doesn't really seem to be particularly aware of that fact however she is landing a lot of double E's uh, and you know it is kind of working out Kalista is really really low has to be actually healed by Soraka because if you get run down by Ash, you are not escaping because Ash is gonna slow you down and you're just gonna get run down slowly and painfully. So uh yeah, so here another huge double E landed here and I'm barely able to finish off the kill. Soraka's not able to block the W in time and I'm able to pick up the kill. I'm tanking a lot of minion damage though, so we have to be a little bit careful here. Sion comes in with the ulti. Uh here I'm just gonna actually walk back to avoid it and uh, heal comes in. Uh, I don't actually think I needed to even flash there, but I just flashed just to be safe. And uh, now Cyan is zero threat to us. I'm just gonna continue running him down. Just, just getting a little bit of free poke damage, uh, essentially, because we obviously can't kill him. He's way too tanky for that. Uh, and instead, we're just gonna quickly get this wave in. Uh, a little bit scared of Callista here because she did just go off on the reset and she did just get items. So I'm not gonna greet over that last cannon minion. I'm actually just going to back here. However, she managed to push the wave so fast that the cannon minion didn't actually die. So I'm actually able to pick up the cannon minion and then reset like so. Which is pretty funny. And she is now just hard shoving the wave. Um, I am able to pick up my recurve bow, which of course you always want to go for the attack speed components first because they are going to allow you to DPS a lot more quickly. Um, I think shoving the wave not really the best approach because I can catch the wave under the tower. I do lose a minion, actually two minions here, but I did get a, the golden XP from the second minion um, over here. But yeah, so I am able to pick up majority of the wave and I am able, able to get a very good quality reset. Uh, sending out the Hawkshot to just check for a vision and generally see Callista on the roam uh, but doesn't get quite get caught coming back to lane ends up going the long way around instead which is of course the better thing to do and here we're just going to simply just continue on farming the wave no big deal here and yeah, not too much happening. We do have a decent amount of action in lane. Uh, double double E unfortunately barely misses. Kalista have a very weird auto uh, uh, auto animations uh, there where she got stuck in the jump or something. And I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But yeah. So so far, um, our jungle hasn't ganked us at all. We did get ganked by Sion once, but it didn't really matter too much. Now here, inexplicably, um, they actually survived the full combo of Seraphine plus my ulti as well and the main reason that happened is because we don't have any anti-heal so Soraka uh, literally used everything she had she used her flash her heal and her ulti and of course her normal healing so the thing healing was just too much so finally Seraphine actually picks up the oblivion orb and is able to um, now actually cut the healing now it's very important for the support to pick up the oblivion orb here because the support uh, gold is less important than the ADC gold ADC needs to really hit the iron power spikes and delaying uh, 800 gold to get the executioner's calling is just too much that's like the equivalent of almost three full kills worth of gold which is 
uh, essentially it's like really negating like three of your kills and in which case I only have one here I don't have three kills to negate but it's gonna set me behind by a lot and you really need the support to rush the anti-heal um, you know to be able to do anything in lane and if you, if the support doesn't do that you can see that even if you get a very good fight it just really is not gonna work out so here we're just um, spamming attacks onto the tower to pick up some tower please we actually get two before the enemy um, Soraka actually comes back and Kalista uh, closely following suit. Here Sion is coming in for another gang. Seraphine blocks the ulti for me and uh, uh, now I'm in a little bit of a spot of bother but I'm able to actually uh, get out here. A huge silence from Soraka actually nearly screws me over but the double shield from Seraphine is enough to keep us alive and now we're gonna flash in to chase the Sion down with the slows. We actually are slowly gonna chip away at him and get uh, the kill onto him. Uh, Rift Herald comes down by the Lee Sin um, and here, Syndra is here together with the Soraka. I'm just trying to get close enough to actually get uh, in range for the tower playing goal, which I do believe I managed to get. Um, here, uh, Flash comes in. I'm going to stun Soraka with the uh, enchanted crystal arrow. Uh, and we also get the second charge onto the arrow. I like how Timo's flashing mastery there, as if he actually was the one who did something. But all that really happened there was I stunned her with the arrow, and all he really did was flash in and Q to get the kill. Pretty funny one there. Uh, but anyways, we're going to recall. We have the Bork completion, and again, we're going for the attack speed components first um, of the Terminus. So we're going to pick up the Double Long Sword um, here. And uh, of course, um, now with the bot lane tower down and the wave really, really pushed up, we're actually going to rotate to mid to see if we can get a play onto the Syndra, who doesn't seem to be a very good player. She's been, you know, dying quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, she has Soraka with her, so no real catching going on here. I say that right as Seraphine she catches her out, but she has Zonya's first item for some reason. She has no completed item, but she has a stasis instead, which is absolutely horrible. Uh, huge stasis comes in from the Seraphine as well, who also bought stasis as a first item. What is going on this match? I'm getting run down by Olaf, who's going to become a recurring problem. Um, and somehow I actually survive on 1 HP, which is really, really lucky. Um, so, I'm um, not Soraka. Olaf is a hard counter to Ash because he cannot get slowed, he cannot get kited when he's in the ulti. And uh, if he manages to slow you down with his Q, you're pretty much dead 100% of the time. Because it means he's going to pop his ulti and just run you down and you have no escape. The only thing you can do is to stand and fight, but you cannot out DPS an Olaf. So uh, Olaf is going to basically be my main enemy this entire match because Sion is really easy to kite. Syndra is not really doing well. Kalista isn't doing well as either. Uh, and probably Soraka is going to be the next biggest problem or maybe even the biggest problem because of the healing um, that she provides. And Ash, of course, building on hit doesn't really build anti-heal. Random uh, W toward the mini wave actually picks up the kill onto the Syndra. 250 gold in the pocket. And here we're just going to focus down this tower. I'm standing at the side here so that I don't get uh, Scion ulted in case he just ults straight down mid lane, which um, he does have a tendency to do uh, you know, as a Scion, of course. Um, this Soraka has been playing pretty well, His, her silences have been pretty insane. Now here I'm just kiting out the Scion a little bit. Uh, he didn't ult me because he didn't have ult us. Kalista just comes in randomly from the side uh, at a completely wrong angle and just, get, angle and just gets taken out. Um, Soraka, now 1 HP, has to run for the hills. Um, Syndra is the next person who comes in. And I'm gonna flash away from the Scion because the CC plus the Scion damage might actually be enough to kill me. So I have to, to keep myself safe here, I have to expand my flash. And now I'm going to reset, probably be able to pick up some items. Top turret is under attack. And uh, we have the terminus completion here. So here um, is where uh, you know things go wrong. So here I see Lee Sin collapsing onto the Olaf. So here I'm trying to uh, you know get a 2v1 onto the Olaf, but Olaf basically just pops everything and goes on. Lee Sin doesn't get here in time and actually uh, I end up dying to the Olaf uh, at long last essentially. I mean I knew I was going to die to him sooner or later in the match but I eventually just end up dying to him here and giving him a huge shutdown which is really really bad. I should have waited for a second longer before I showed. I should have waited for maybe two seconds longer for Lee Sin to get closer before I showed and I think that the play would have actually worked out. Speaking of a play, T Timo gets a huge play onto Kalista where he blinds Kalista and essentially just runs her down but runs straight into the Scion and Soraka after that and they are going to run him down so it's a one for one trade overall with the dragon uh, up. 
good news is that I respawn before Callista, so I'm gonna run straight to the dragon. Here, the whole time, I'm trying to aim my ult. I'm trying to look at the fight and see uh, how I can get my ult here. I'm trying to see if I can get it onto the Syndra here, but I realized that I can just walk right there. And I didn't actually notice the Olaf just behind me running me down. And here is where I noticed the Olaf running me down, but it's kind of too late to do anything. I just get run down by the Olaf, essentially, like, like so. And Olaf proceeds to run down other people, but does, of course, end up um, going down eventually. So not, not too hot of a situation for me. Uh, I was just looking uh, uh, at the other parts of the map and I didn't notice uh, Olaf just whacking me from behind uh, for a good one second before I eventually noticed and it was too late. I mean, honestly, even if I noticed, I don't think it's a lot I could have done anyway. So, uh, yeah, I don't think much would have changed to be very honest. So, yeah, team of another pick onto the Syndra. Uh, yeah, Syndra is not having a good time here. And now with the dragon still up, we're back, back to the dragon, placing a ward into the dragon bush, because um, the other one is going to expire. Now I'm just rotating over to clear this wave that's dying to the tower, because my team is not around yet anyway, so I can contest the dragon alone. Sion has finally made his way to the dragon. Here I'm just attacking the crux to keep up my stacks on my Q. Uh, Q now fully stacked. I'm coming in with the fully stacked Q, focusing the Callista, who's a very squishy target. Huge Seraphine charm comes in onto two. Uh, and I'm going to focus down the Soraka. Really important to get rid of Soraka first. Sion is now tanking like a full full team. And he ends up going down. We're now going to focus the Dragon. Um, Syndra and Olaf are coming in. Uh, Syndra, uh, not too much of a threat. But Olaf, huge threat. But he can't run into four people most likely. So he's going to back off as well. Um, now I'm going to hit over and um, continue to clear up the next wave in the bot lane. Like so. So in this case, this on-hit build kind of quote-unquote um, counters the Olaf and the Scion because they are building health items, but you can see that in terms of countering the Scion, it is kind of working out. We are shredding the Scion pretty well, but we're not really countering the Olaf because Olaf uh, does too much damage and he can just run us down. Like it, It's just, yeah, it's just Olaf versus ADCs, right? Very little ADCs can do against Olaf because he can't really be kited in any way, shape, or form unless you have multiple dashes. Like if you're a Vein, you might be able to kite Olaf, but as an Ash or like a Varus or anything like that, you can't kite Olaf because he's CC immune. You can't slow him, you can't root him, you can't stun him, uh, and he just runs you down, basically. So here I'm just checking because I saw Olaf near this area, so I'm just making sure he's not here because if I go for this wave and he runs me down, I'm just going to cop another death for no reason, and I don't really want that. <laughs> so here I'm just going to quickly grab this wave and now just hit away. I can see Olaf is actually right there, so if I pushed any further, uh, it would have been a another death for me uh, in this situation. So here a huge play is uh, happening at the top side of my team. Again, I'm looking to see if I can arrow anyone, but I choose to instead uh, go to mid and uh, defend the target against Syndra. I'm actually thinking of maybe just arrowing the Syndra here and getting a pick onto her, because she's like 1 in 5, uh, doesn't really do very much damage at the moment. But I decide to instead rotate up to the fight. Uh, Syndra is rotating up as well, so I'm trying to make my way there. My team is really, really overextended. Um, I'm trying to see if I can hit a crucial arrow. I end up hitting the arrow onto the Soraka, which does stop her from healing people, I guess, but it's not a very high impact arrow. Uh, my team is slowly getting run down. Only Timo and uh, Urgot are left. Uh, and the enemy team is uh, going for Baron, uh, as they rightfully should. So now I'm in a very awkward situation because uh, I was like, maybe let me just uh, use my range and, and get some free damage onto the enemy team. Uh, but the issue here is that Olaf uh, actually has, still has ult and just runs me down uh, with uh, his Q hitting as well. Uh, I honestly thought that Olaf would not have ult after the entire fight, so I thought I was fine to, to um, you know, just uh, attack from range and you know, if anyone tries to run me down, I can just slow them and I should be fine, right? Uh, especially because I still have flash. But I get silenced, so I can't flash, and Olaf has ult, so even if I could flash, it wouldn't matter because I couldn't slow him down anyway. So, kind of a disaster. Um, although I would say that the assumption I made that Olaf doesn't have ult is not exactly a horrible assumption considering that a huge fight just happened and Olaf probably would have ulted, but he just did. So here, uh, Lee Sin is trying to look for a steal, and uh, I'm not sure why the enemy team is still doing Baron because they have a Scion jungle, which basically means, as you can see here, Lee Sin can just hop in and steal because Scion can't burst down the Baron. So, uh, poor play from the enemy team, uh, and we actually end up killing them all. Uh, Olaf now dies as well, and yeah, we basically just end up killing them all. Lee Sin picks up a huge shutdown, and now we have Baron. 
So now with the mid lane wave crashing into the tower, we can actually like, keep pushing. Let's look at our waves. All three of our waves are pushing in, so we can actually go push all three lanes. So here, um, we can see we're going to push down mid first. Uh, mid is normally just the lane that everyone pushes because everyone just AFK goes mid and pushes mid, so we're just going to push down mid first. And you can see now I'm looking to rotate. Uh, here Seraphine and Lee Sin are trolling because why, why are you doing it in mid lane? You're, you can't end the game anyway, the enemy team is respawning, so why aren't you just pushing another lane? I'm pinging to push another lane, but Seraphine and Lee Sin are just literally just trolling in mid. So now I can't push any further because the enemy team has respawned, so instead I'm going to I'm gonna steal their jungle camps. Olaf has already taken, not Olaf, uh, Urgot has already taken their blue buff. I'm trying to get the Grom, but Olaf, uh, not Olaf, Urgot steals the, the Grom from me. So I'm gonna go for the Skull instead uh, over here. And I am gonna be able to get the Skull because this time Urgot's not actually trying to, to steal it from me. And here now Lee Sin just dies top lane randomly um, because, because uh, he tries to push when the whole enemy team has respawned, which, like, what are you doing, right? Like, first you troll by staying mid lane, and then you troll by pushing when the whole enemy team is alive. That, that completely trolling here. Um, and you can see Dragon is spawning. So now here what I'm trying to do is, we still have like 10 seconds of Baron. Dragon is spawning, so the enemy team is probably going to go to Dragon. So I'm trying to trade the Dragon for an inhip here. But my whole team trolls macro-wise, which is really enraging for me, because there's no way we can get the dragon because our Lee Sin is dead. We can't steal the dragon with Scion having smite. So the best thing we can do is to get the inhib in trade. And the enemy team actually recognizes this, so they send their, they send their bot lane to defend. But if my whole team was here with, with four men, they can't defend against this, so we should be getting a free inhib. But instead, my whole team runs mid and just pushes mid for no reason. Like, we can't get anything mid. There's no inhib there to take anymore, and we can't end the game. So why are we not just pushing top? We're just letting them clear the waves, and we get nothing. And we give them a free dragon, which is really, really infuriating, as you can tell from like, my tone of voice and such. But it, I have no idea why. Anyway, uh, you know, enough of that. And we can't control our team. And then here, um, Seraphine actually tries to start a fight against the Olaf. Olaf goes unstoppable, but, but runs way too deep and ends up just getting slowly but surely killed by me as I kite him away. I'm focusing Soraka because you always have to focus Soraka first. I flash forward, stun her, finish her off, and now I'm onto the Scion who's really, really tanky, but I have the attack speed and the shred. Uh, Kalista flashes into me, so I'm just going to kill her first, and we eventually get the Scion done as well. And inexplicably, we actually end up just winning the game just based off winning this random team fight here. Uh, so yeah. Anyways guys, uh, we're going to leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'm going to leave you guys with the stats as usual and goodbye.